Erfurt. Erfurt is the capital and largest city in the state of Thuringia, central Germany. Erfurt lies in the southern part of the Thuringian Basin, within the wide valley of the Jera River. It is located southwest of Leipzig, southwest of Berlin, north of Munich and northeast of Frankfurt. Together with neighboring cities Weimar and Jena it forms the central metropolitan area of Thuringia with approximately 500,000 inhabitants. Erfurt's Old Town is one of the best preserved medieval city centers in Germany. Tourist attractions include the Kramerbrook, Merchant's Bridge, the Old Synagogue, the Ensemble of Erfurt Cathedral and Severkirche, St. Severus's Church, and Petersburg Citadel, one of the largest and best preserved town fortresses in Europe. The city's economy is based on agriculture, horticulture and microelectronics. Its central location has led to it becoming a logistics hub for Germany and Central Europe. Erfurt hosts the second largest trade fair in eastern Germany, after Leipzig, as well as the public television children's channel Key Kansas. The city is situated on the Via Regia, a medieval trade and pilgrims road network. Modern-day Erfurt is also a hub for ICE high-speed trains and other German non-European transport networks. Erfurt was first mentioned in 742, as St. Boniface founded the diocese. Although the town did not belong to any of the Thuringian states politically, it quickly became the economic center of the region and it was a member of the Hanseatic League. It was part of the electorate of Mainz during the Holy Roman Empire and later became part of the Kingdom of Prussia in 1802. From 1949 until 1990 Erfurt was part of the German Democratic Republic, East Germany. The University of Erfurt was founded in 1379, making it the first university to be established within the geographic area which constitutes modern-day Germany. It closed in 1816 and was re-established in 1994, with the main modern campus on what was a teacher's training college. Martin Luther 1483 to 1546, was its most famous student, studying there from 1501 before entering St. Augustine's Monastery in 1505. Other noted Erfurters include the medieval philosopher and mystic Meister Eckhart, circa 1260 to 1328, the Baroque composer Johann Pachelbel, 1653 to 1706, and the sociologist Max Weber, 1864 to 1920. Erfurt is an old Germanic settlement. The earliest evidence of human settlement dates from the prehistoric era. Archaeological finds from the north of Erfurt revealed human traces from the Paleolithic period, ca. 100,000 BCE. The Melchendorf dig in the southern city part showed a settlement from the Neolithic period. The Thuringii inhabited the Erfurt area ca. 480 and gave their name to Thuringia ca. 500. The town is first mentioned in 742 under the name of Erfisfurt. In that year, St. Boniface wrote to Pope Zachary to inform him that he had established three dioceses in central Germany, one of them in a place called Erfisfurt, which for a long time has been inhabited by pagan natives. All three dioceses, the other two were Wurzburg and Burberg, were confirmed by Zachary the next year, though in 755 Erfurt was brought into the Diocese of Mainz. That the place was populous already is borne out by archaeological evidence, which includes 23 graves and 6 horse burials from the 6th and 7th centuries. Throughout the Middle Ages, Erfurt was an important trading town because of its location, near a ford across the Jera River. Together with the other five Thuringian woad towns of Gotha, Tenstedt, Arnstadt, and Langensalze, it was the center of the German woad trade, which made those cities very wealthy. Erfurt was the junction of important trade routes. The Via Regia was one of the most used east-west roads between France and Russia, via Frankfurt, Erfurt, Leipzig and Bratislav, and another route in the north-south direction was the connection between the Baltic Sea ports, for example Lübeck, and the potent upper Italian city-states like Venice and Milan. During the 10th and 11th centuries both the Emperor and the Electorate of Mainz held some privileges in Erfurt. The German kings had an important monastery on Petersburg Hill and the archbishops of Mainz collected taxes from the people. Around 1100, some people became free citizens by paying the annual, liberation tax, which marks the first step in becoming an independent city. During the 12th century, as a sign of more and more independence, the citizens built a city wall around Erfurt, in the area of today's. After 1200, Independence was fulfilled and a city council was founded in 1217, the town hall was built in 1275. In the following decades, the council bought a city owned territory around Erfurt, which consisted at its height of nearly 100 villages and castles and even another small town, Zumurda. 
Erfurt became an important regional power between the land graviate of Thuringia around, the electorate of Mainz to the west and the electorate of Saxony to the east. Between 1306 and 1481, Erfurt was allied with the two other major Thuringian cities, Mühlhausen and Nordhausen, in Thuringian City Alliance and the three cities joined the Hanseatic League together in 1430. A peak in economic development was reached in the 15th century, when the city had a population of 20,000 making it one of the largest in Germany. Between 1432 and 1446, a second and higher city wall was established. In 1483, a first city fortress was built on Syriaxburg Hill in the southwestern part of the town. The Jewish community of Erfurt was founded in the 11th century and became, together with Mainz, Worms, and Speyer, one of the most influential in Germany. Their old synagogue is still extant and a museum today, as is the McVeigh at Jera Rivernier. In 1349, during the wave of Black Death Jewish persecutions across Europe, the Jews of Erfurt were rounded up, with more than 100 killed and the rest driven from the city. Before the persecution, a wealthy Jewish merchant buried his property in the basement of his house. In 1998, this treasure was found during construction works. The Erfurt treasure with various gold and silver objects is shown in the exhibition in the synagogue today. Only a few years after 1349, the Jews moved back to Erfurt and founded a second community, which was disbanded by the city council in 1458. In 1379, the University of Erfurt was founded. Together with the University of Cologne it was one of the first city-owned universities in Germany, while they were usually owned by the. Some buildings of this old university are extant or restored in the Latin Quarter in the northern city center, like, student dorms and others, the hospital and the church of the university. The university quickly became a hotspot of German cultural life and Renaissance humanism with scholars like Ulrich von Huden, Helius Eobanus Hesses, and Justice Jonas. In 1501 Martin Luther, 1483-1546, moved to Erfurt and began his studies at the university. After 1505, he lived at St. Augustine's Monastery as a friar. In 1507 he was ordained as a priest in Erfurt Cathedral. He moved permanently to Wittenberg in 1511. Erfurt was an early adopter of the Protestant Reformation, in 1521. In 1530, the city became one of the first in Europe to be officially biconfessional with the Hamelburg Treaty. It kept that status through all the following centuries. The later 16th and the 17th century brought a slow economic decline of Erfurt. Trade shrank, the population was falling and the university lost its influence. The city's independence was endangered. In 1664, the city and surrounding area were brought under the dominion of the electorate of Mainz and the city lost its independence. The electorate built a huge fortress on Petersburg Hill between 1665 and 1726 to control the city and instituted a governorial air fort. During the late 18th century, air fort saw another cultural peak. Governor Karl Theodor Anton Maria von Dahlbeck had close relations with Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Johann Gottfried Herder, Christoph Martin Wieland and Wilhelm von Humboldt, who often visited him at his court in air fort. Erfurt became part of the Kingdom of Prussia in 1802, to compensate for territories Prussia lost to France on the left bank of the Rhine. In the capitulation of Erfurt, the city, its 12,000 Prussian and Saxon defenders under William VI, Prince of Orange Nassau, 65 artillery pieces, and the Petersburg Citadel and Syriaxburg Citadel were handed over to the French on October 16, 1806. Semicolon ref name equals Petre 1907 1993 slash ref at the time of capitulation. Joachim Morat, Marshal of France, had about 16,000 troops near Erfurt. With the attachment of the Saxe Weimar territory of Blankenhain, the city became part of the First French Empire in 1806 as the Principality of Erfurt directly subordinate to Napoleon as an imperial state domain, separate from the Confederation of the Rhine, which the surrounding Thuringian states had joined. Erfurt was administered by a civilian and military senate, under a French governor, based in the, previously the seat of city's governor under the electorate. Napoleon first visited the principality on July 23, 1807, inspecting the citadels and fortifications. In 1808, the Congress of Erfurt was held with Napoleon and Alexander I of Russia visiting the city. During their administration, the French introduced street lighting and a tax on foreign horses to pay for maintaining the road surface. The suffered under the French occupation, 
with its inventory being auctioned off to other local churches, including the organ, bells and even the Tower of Chapel, and the former monastery's library being donated to the University of Erfurt, and then to the Boingberg Library when the university closed in 1816. Similarly the Syriaxburg citadel was damaged by the French, with the city side walls being partially dismantled in the hunt for imagined treasures from the convent, workers being paid from the sale of the building materials. In 1811, to commemorate the birth of the Prince Imperial, a ceremonial column, of wood and plaster was erected on the common dot similarly, the comma a Greek-style temple topped by a winged victory with shield, sword and lance and containing a bust of Napoleon sculpted by Friedrich Dahl was erected in the woods, including a grotto with fountain and flower beds, using a large pond, from the, inaugurated with ceremony on 14th of August 1811 after extravagant celebrations for Napoleon's birthday, which were repeated in 1812 with a concert in the conducted by Louis Port. With the Sixth Coalition forming after French defeat in Russia, on February 24, 1813 Napoleon ordered the Petersburg Citadel to prepare for siege visiting the city on 25th of April to inspect the fortifications, in particular both citadels. On July 10, 1813, Napoleon put, Baron of the Empire, in charge of the defenses of their fort. However, when the French decreed that 1,000 men would be conscripted into the, the recruits were joined by other citizens and rioting on 19th of July that led to 20 arrests, of whom two were sentenced to death by French court-martial, as a result, the French ordered the closure of all in and ale houses. Within a week of the Sixth Coalition's decisive victory at Leipzig, 16 October 19, 1813, however, Air Fort was besieged by Prussian, Austrian and Russian troops under the command of Prussian Lieutenant Jen von Kleist. After a first capitulation signed by Dalton on December 20, 1813 the French troops withdrew to the two fortresses off Petersburg and Syriaxburg, allowing for the coalition forces to march into Air Fort on January 6, 1814 to jubilant greetings. The ceremonial column was burned and destroyed as a symbol of the citizens' oppression under the French, similarly the was burned on November 1, 1813 and completely destroyed by Erfurters and their besiegers in 1814. After a call for volunteers three days later, 300 Erfurters joined the coalition armies in France. Finally, in May 1814, the French capitulated fully, with 1,700 French troops vacating the Petersburg and Syriaxburg fortresses. During the two and a half months of siege, the mortality rate rose in the city greatly. 1,564 Erfurt citizens died in 1813, around a thousand more than the previous year. After the Congress of Vienna, Air Fort was restored to Prussia on June 21, 1815, becoming the capital of one of the three districts, of the new province of Saxony, but some southern and eastern parts of Erfurter lands joined Blankenhain in being transferred to the Grand Duchy of Saxe by Mar Eisenach the following September. Although enclosed by Thuringian territory in the west, south and east, the city remained part of the Prussian province of Saxony until 1944. After the 1848 revolution, many Germans desired to have a united national state. An attempt in this direction was the failed Air Fort Union of German states in 1850. The Industrial Revolution reached Air Fort in the 1840s, when the Thuringian Railway connecting Berlin and Frankfurt was built. Out during the following years, many factories in different sectors were founded. One of the biggest was the Royal Gun Factory of Prussia in 1862. After the unification of Germany in 1871, Air Fort moved from the southern border of Prussia to the center of Germany, so the fortifications of the city were no longer needed. The demolition of the city fortifications in 1873 led to a construction boom in Air Fort, because it was now possible to build in the area formerly occupied by the city walls and beyond. Many public and private buildings emerged in the infrastructure, such as a tramway, hospitals, and schools, improved rapidly. The number of inhabitants grew from 40,000 around 1870 to 130,000 in 1914 and the city expanded in all directions. The Air Fort program was adopted by the Social Democratic Party of Germany during its Congress at Air Fort in 1891. Between the wars, the city kept growing. Housing shortages were fought with building programs and social infrastructure was broadened according to the welfare policy in the Weimar Republic. The Great Depression between 1929 and 1932 led to a disaster for Erfurt, nearly one out of three became unemployed. Conflicts between far left and far right oriented milieus increased, and many inhabitants supported the new Nazi government and Adolf Hitler. Others, especially some communist workers, put up resistance against the new administration. 
In 1938, the new synagogue was destroyed during the Jews lost their property and emigrated or were deported to Nazi concentration camps, together with many communists. In 1914, the company Topf and Sons began the manufacture of crematoria later becoming the market leader in this industry. Under the Nazis, Ja Topf and Sons supplied specially developed crematoria, ovens and associated plants to the Auschwitz-Birkenau, Buchenwald and Mauthausen Gusen concentration camps. On January 27, 2011 a memorial and museum dedicated to the Holocaust victims was opened at the former company premises in Air Fort. Bombed as a target of the oil campaign of World War II, Air Fort suffered only limited damage and was captured on April 12, 1945, by the U.S. 80th Infantry Division. On 3 July, American troops left the city, which then became part of the Soviet zone of occupation and eventually of the German Democratic Republic, East Germany. In 1948, Air Fort became the capital of Thuringia, replacing Weimar. In 1952, the in the GDR were dissolved in favor of centralization under the new socialist government. Air Fort then became the capital of a new district. In 1953, the of education was founded, followed by the of medicine in 1954, the first academic institutions in Air Fort since the closing of the university in 1816. On March 19, 1970, the East and West German heads of government Willy Stoff and Willy Brandt met in Erfurt, the first such meeting since the division of Germany. During the 1970s and 1980s, as the economic situation in GDR worsened, many old buildings in city center decayed, while the government fought against the housing shortage by building large settlements in the periphery. The peaceful revolution of 1989-1990 led to German reunification. With the reformation of the state of Thuringia in 1990, the city became the state capital. After reunification, a deep economic crisis occurred in eastern Germany. Many factories closed and many people lost their jobs and moved to the former West Germany. At the same time, many buildings were redeveloped and the infrastructure improved massively. In 1994, the new university was opened, as was the Fachhochschule in 1991. Between 2005 and 2008, the economic situation improved as the unemployment rate decreased and new enterprises developed. In addition, the population began to increase once again. Air Fort is situated in the south of the Thuringian Basin, a fertile agricultural area between the Harz Mountains to the north and the Thuringian Forest to the southwest. Whereas the northern parts of the city area are flat, the southern ones consist of hilly landscape up to 430 meters of elevation. In this part lies the municipal forest of with beeches and oaks as main tree species. To the east and to the west are some non forested hills so that the Jura River Valley within the town forms a basin. North of the city are some gravel pits in operation, while others are abandoned, flooded, and used as leisure areas. Air Fort has a humid continental climate, DFB, or an oceanic climate, CFB. According to the Kutpin Climate Classification System. Summers are warm and sometimes humid with average high temperatures of and lows of. Winters are relatively cold with average high temperatures of and lows of. The city's topography creates a microclimate caused by the location inside a basin with sometimes inversion in winter, quite cold nights under, and inadequate air circulation in summer. Annual precipitation is only with moderate rainfall throughout the year. Light snowfall mainly occurs from December through February but snow cover does not usually remain for long. Air Fort abuts the districts of Zumerda, Municipality Switerda, Elksleben, Walschleben, Rieth Nordhausen, Noda, Alperstedt, Grossrudstedt, Udstedt, Klein Molsen and Gross Molsen, in the north, Weimarland, Municipalities Niedersimmern, Nora, Monschenholzhausen and Kletbach, in the east, Ilmkreis, Municipalities Kirchheim, Rockhausen and AMT Wakesenberg, in the south and Gotha, municipalities Nessiap Velstadt, Nodal Ben, Zimmern Supra and Bienstadt, in the west. The city itself is divided into 53 districts. The center is formed by the district, Old Town, and the districts in the northwest, in the northeast, in the east, in the southeast, in the southwest and in the west. More former industrial districts are, incorporated in 1911, and in the north. Another group of districts is marked by Plattenbau settlements. Constructed during the GDR period, comma, 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 and in the northern as well as comma and in the southern city parts. Finally, there are many villages with an average population of approximately 1,000 which were incorporated during the 20th century, however, they mostly stayed rural to date around the year 1500, 
the city had 18,000 inhabitants and was one of the largest cities in the Holy Roman Empire. The population then more or less stagnated until the 19th century. The population of Erfurt was 21,000 in 1820, and increased to 32,000 in 1847, the year of rail connection as industrialization began. In the following decades, Erfurt grew up to 130,000 at the beginning of World War I and 190,000 inhabitants in 1950. A maximum was reached in 1988 with 220,000 persons. The bad economic situation in eastern Germany after the reunification resulted in a decline in population, which fell to 200,000 in 2002 before rising again to 206,000 in 2011. The average growth of population between 2009 and 2012 was approximately 0.68% p. a., whereas the population in bordering rural regions is shrinking with accelerating tendency. Suburbanization played only a small role in Erfurt. It occurred after reunification for a short time in the 1990s, but most of the suburban areas were situated within the administrative city borders. The birth deficit was 200 in 2012, this is minus 1.0 per 1,000 inhabitants, Thuringian average, minus 4.5, national average, minus 2.4. The net migration rate was plus 8.3 per 1,000 inhabitants in 2012. Thuringian average, minus 0.8, national average, plus 4.6. The most important regions of origin of Erfurt migrants are rural areas of Thuringia, Saxony-Anhalt and Saxony as well as foreign countries like Poland, Russia, Syria, Afghanistan, and Hungary. Like other eastern German cities, foreigners account only for a small share of Erfurt's population. Circa 3.0% are non-Germans by citizenship and overall 5.9% are migrants, according to the 2011 EU census. Due to the official atheism of the former GDR, most of the population is non-religious. 14.8% are members of the Evangelical Church in Central Germany and 6.8% are Catholics, according to the 2011 EU census. The Jewish community consists of 500 members. Most of them migrated to Erfurt from Russia and Ukraine in the 1990s. Martin Luther, 1483-1546, studied law and philosophy at the University of Erfurt from 1501. He lived in St. Augustine's Monastery in Erfurt, as a friar from 1505-1511. to The theologian, philosopher and mystic Meister Eckhart, circa 1260-1328 entered the Dominican Monastery in Erfurt when he was aged about 18, around 1275. Eckhart was the Dominican prior at Erfurt from 1294 until 1298, and vicar of Thuringia from 1298 to 1302. After a year in Paris, he returned to Erfurt in 1303 and administered his duties as provincial of Saxony from there until 1311. Max Weber, 1864-1920, was born in Erfurt. He was a sociologist, philosopher, jurist, and political economist whose ideas have profoundly influenced modern social theory and social research. The textile designer Margarita Reichart, 1907-1984, was born and died in Erfurt. She studied at the Bauhaus from 1926 to 1930, and while their work had with Marcel Breuer on his innovative chair designs. Her former home and weaving workshop in Erfurt, the Margarita Reichart House, is now a museum, managed by the Anger Museum Erfurt. Johann Pachelbel, 1653-1706, served as organist at the Prediger Church in Erfurt from June 1678 until August 1690. Pachelbel composed approximately 70 pieces for organ while in Erfurt. After 1906 the composer Richard Wetz, 1875-1935, lived in Erfurt and became the leading person in the town's musical life. His major works were written here, including three symphonies, a requiem and a Christmas oratorio. Alexander Mulla, 1808-1863, pianist, conductor and composer, was born in Erfurt. He later moved to Zurich, where he served as leader of the General Music Society's subscription concerts series. The city is the birthplace of one of Johann Sebastian Bach's cousins, Johann Bernard Bach as well as Johann Sebastian Bach's father Johann Ambrosius Bach. Bach's parents were married in 1668 in a small church, the Merchant's Church, that still exists on the main square, Anger. Famous modern musicians from Erfurt are Clouseau, the Boogie Pimps and Yvonne Catterfeld. Erfurt has a great variety of museums. 
Since 2003, the Modern Opera House is home to Theater Erfurt and its Philharmonic Orchestra. The grand stage section has 800 seats and the studio stage can hold 200 spectators. In September 2005, the opera Waiting for the Barbarians by Philip Glass premiered in the Opera House. The Erfurt Theater has been a source of controversy recently. In 2005, a performance of Engelbert Humperdinck's opera stirred up the local press since the performance contained suggestions of pedophilia and incest. The opera was advertised in the program with the addition for adults only. On April 12, 2008, a version of Verdi's opera directed by Johann Kresnick opened at the Air Fort Theater. The production stirred deep controversy by featuring nude performers in Mickey Mouse masks dancing on the ruins of the World Trade Center and a female singer with a painted-on Hitler toothbrush mustache performing a straight-arm Nazi salute, along with sinister portrayals of American soldiers, Uncle Sam, and Elvis Presley impersonators. The director described the production as a populist critique of modern American society, aimed at showing up the disparities between rich and poor. The controversy prompted one local politician to call for locals to boycott the performances, but this was largely ignored and the premiere was sold out. The Mess Airfort serves as playground for the Odinger Rockets, a professional basketball team in Germany's first division, the Basketball Bundesliga. Notable types of sport in Airfort are athletics, ice skating, cycling, with the oldest velodrome in use in the world, opened in 1885, swimming, handball, volleyball, tennis and football. The city's football club is member of and based in with a capacity of 20,000. That was the second indoor speed skating arena in Germany. Airfort cityscape features a medieval core of narrow, curved alleys in the center surrounded by a belt of architecture, created between 1873 and 1914. In 1873, the city's fortifications were demolished and it became possible to build houses in the area in front of the former city walls. In the following years, Air Fort saw a construction boom. In the northern area, districts Andres Verstadt, Johannes Verstadt and Ilvers Gehofen, tenements fourth factory workers were built whilst the eastern area, Krampfer Verstadt and Daberstedt, featured apartments for white-collar workers and clerks in the southwestern part, Lober Verstadt and Bruller Verstadt, with its beautiful valley landscape saw the construction of villas and mansions of rich factory owners and notables. During the interwar period, some settlements in Bauhaus style were realized, often as housing cooperatives. After World War II and over the whole GDR period, housing shortages remained a problem even though the government started a big apartment construction program. Between 1970 and 1990 large settlements with high-rise blocks on the northern, for 50,000 inhabitants, and southeastern, for 40,000 inhabitants, periphery were constructed. After reunification the renovation of old houses in city center and the areas was a big issue. The federal government granted substantial subsidies, so that many houses could be restored. Compared to many other German cities, little of Erfurt was destroyed in World War II. This is one reason why the center today offers a mixture of medieval, Baroque and neoclassical architecture as well as buildings from the last 150 years. Public green spaces are located along Jera River and in several parks like the Kama the Inna. The largest green area is the, a horticultural exhibition park and botanic garden established in 1961. The city center has about 25 churches and monasteries, most of them in Gothic style, some also in Romanesque style or a mixture of Romanesque and Gothic elements, and a few in later styles. The various steeples characterize the medieval center and led to one of their fort's nicknames as the Thuringian Rome. The oldest parts of Erfurt's Alta Synagoga, Old Synagogue, date to the 11th century. It was used until 1349 when the Jewish community was destroyed in a pogrom known as the Erfurt Massacre. The building had many other uses since then. It was conserved in the 1990s and in 2009 it became a museum of Jewish history. A rare McVeigh, a ritual bath, dating from circa 1250, was discovered by archaeologists in 2007. It has been accessible to visitors on guided tours since September 2011. In 2015, the old synagogue and McVeigh were nominated as a World Heritage Site. It has been tentatively listed, but a final decision has not yet been made. As religious freedom was granted in the 19th century, some Jews returned to Erfurt. They built their synagogue on the banks of the Jera River and used it from 1840 until 1884. The neoclassical building is known as the Kleine Synagoga, Small Synagogue. Today it is used in events center. It is also open to visitors. A larger synagogue, 
The Grossa Synagoga, Great Synagogue, was opened in 1884 because the community had become larger and wealthier. This Moorish style building was destroyed during nationwide Nazi riots, known as on 9 November 10, 1938. In 1947 the land which the Great Synagogue had occupied was returned to the Jewish community and they built their current place of worship, the Neue Synagoge, New Synagogue, which opened in 1952. It was the only synagogue building erected under communist rule in East Germany. Besides the religious buildings there is a lot of historic secular architecture in Erfurt, mostly concentrated in the city center, but some 19th and 20th century buildings are located on the outskirts. From 1066 until 1873 the old town of Erfurt was encircled by a fortified wall. About 1168 this was extended to run around the western side of Petersburg Hill, enclosing it within the city boundaries. After German unification in 1871, Erfurt became part of the newly created German Empire. The threat to the city from its Saxon neighbors and from Bavaria was no longer present, so it was decided to dismantle the city walls. Only a few remnants remain today. A piece of inner wall can be found in a small park at corner Uriga Garden Ring and Johannesstrasse and another piece at the flood ditch, Flutgraben, near Frankestrasse. There is also a small restored part of the wall in the Bruller Garten, behind the Catholic orphanage. Only one of the wall's fortified towers was left standing, on Boinberg Ufer, but this was destroyed in an air raid in 1944. The Petersburg Citadel is one of the largest and best preserved city fortresses in Europe, covering an area of 36 hectares in the northwest of the city center. It was built from 1665 on Petersburg Hill and was in military use until 1963. Since 1990, it has been significantly restored and is now open to the public as an historic site. The is a smaller citadel southwest of the city center, dating from 1480. Today, it houses the German Horticulture Museum. Between 1873 and 1914, a belt of architecture emerged around the city center. The mansion district in the southwest around, and hosts some interesting and Art Nouveau buildings. The Mollenviertel, Mill Quarter, is an area of beautiful Art Nouveau apartment buildings, cobblestone streets and street trees just to the north of the old city, in the vicinity of Nor Park, bordered by the Jera River on its east side. The Schmale Jera stream runs through the area. In the Middle Ages, numerous small enterprises using the power of water mills occupied the area, hence the name Mohanviertel, with street names such as Waymohnweg, Wode, or Indigo, Millway, Storchmohnweg, Stork Millway, and Papiamohnweg, Paper Millway. The Bauhaus style is represented by some housing cooperative projects in the east around and in the north around. Luther Kirk Church in 1927 is an Art Deco building. The former malt factory Wolfett in the east of Erfurt is a large industrial complex built between 1880 and 1939, and in use until 2000. A new use has not been found yet, but the area is sometimes used as a location in movie productions because of its atmosphere. Some examples of Nazi architecture are the buildings of the Thuringian Parliament and an event hall in the south at, while the building, 1930s, represents more the neo Roman slash fascist style. 1940s, is marked by some Neo-Germanic style elements. The Stalinist early GDR style is manifested in the main building of the University at, 1953, and the later more international modern GDR style is represented by the Horticultural Exhibition Center at, the housing complexes like Reethor and the redevelopment of an area along in the city center. The current international glass and steel architecture is dominant among most larger new buildings like the Federal Labor Court of Germany. 1999, the new Opera House, 2003, the new Main Station, 2007, the University Library, the Air Fort Mess, Convention Center, and the Ice Rink. During recent years, the economic situation of the city improved, the unemployment rate declined from 21% in 2005 to 9% in 2013. Nevertheless, some 14,000 households with 24,500 persons, 12% of population, are dependent upon state social benefits, hearts for. Farming has a great tradition in Erfurt, the cultivation of wood made the city rich during the Middle Ages. Today, horticulture and the production of flower seeds is still an important business in Erfurt. There is also growing of fruits, like apples, strawberries and sweet cherries, vegetables, for example cauliflowers, potatoes, 
cabbage and sugar beets, and grain on more than 60% of the municipal territory. Industrialization in Erfurt started around 1850. Until World War I, many factories were founded in different sectors like engine building, shoes, guns, malt and later electrotechnics, so that there was no industrial monoculture in the city. After 1945, the companies were nationalized by the GD government, which led to the decline of some of them. After reunification, nearly all factories were closed, either because they failed to successfully adopt to a free market economy or because the German government sold them to West German businessmen who closed them to avoid competition to their own enterprises. However, in the early 1990s the federal government started to subsidize the foundation of new companies. It still took a long time before the economic situation stabilized around 2006. Since this time, unemployment has decreased and overall, new jobs were created. Today, there are many small and medium-sized companions in Erfurt with electrotechnics, semiconductors and photovoltaics in focus. Building engines, the production of food, i.e. a big noodle factory, the Brau Gold Brewery, and Born Feinkost a producer of Thuringian mustard, are still in important industries. Erfurt is an, which means supercenter according to central place theory, in German regional planning. Such centers are always hubs of service businesses and public services like hospitals, universities, research, trade fairs, retail etc. Additionally, Erfurt is the capital of the federal state of Thuringia, so that there are many institutions of administration like all the Thuringian state ministries and some nationwide authorities. Typical for Erfurt are the logistic business with many distribution centers of big companies, the Erfurt trade fair and the media sector with Kikon MDRS public broadcast stations. A growing industry is tourism, due to the various historical sites of Erfurt. There are 4,800 hotel beds and, in 2012, 450,000 overnight visitors spent a total of 700,000 nights in hotels. Nevertheless, most tourists are one-day visitors from Germany. The Christmas market in December attracts some 2 million visitors each year. The ICE railway network makes Erfurt one and a half hours from Berlin, two and a half hours from Frankfurt. 2 hours from Dresden, and 45 minutes from Leipzig. In 2017, the ice line to Munich opened, making the trip to Erfurt only two and a half hours. There are regional trains from Erfurt to Weimar, Jena, Gotha, Eisenach, Bad Lang and Salza, Magdeburg, Nordhausen, Göttingen, Mühlhausen, Würzburg, Meiningen, Ulmenau, Arnstadt, and Jera. In freight transport, there is an intermodal terminal in the district of Wieselbach with connections to rail and the Autobahn. The two Autobahn and crossing each other nearby at Herfurter Kreuz are the Bunz Autobahn 4, Frankfurt Dresden, and the Bunz Autobahn 71, Schweinfurt Sumscherhausen. Together with the East Tangent both motorways form a circle road around the city and lead the interregional traffic around the center. Whereas the A4 was built in the 1930s, the A71 came into being after the reunification in the 1990s and 2000s. In addition to both motorways there are two Bundesstrassen, the Bundesstrasse 7 connects Erfurt parallel to A4 with Gotha in the west and Weimar in the east. The Bundesstrasse 4 is a connection between Erfurt and Nordhausen in the north. Its southern part to Coburg was annulled when A71 was finished, in this section, the A71 now effectively serves as B4. Within the circle road, B7 and B4 are also annulled so that the city government has to pay for maintenance instead of the German federal government. The access to the city is restricted as since 2012 for some vehicles. Large parts of the inner city are a pedestrian area which cannot be reached by car, except for residents. The airport public transport system is marked by the area-wide, light rail, network, established as a tram system in 1883, upgraded to a light rail, system in 1997 and continually expanded and upgraded through the 2000s. Today, there are six stop-on lines running every 10 minutes on every light rail route. Additionally, Airfort operates a bus system, which connects the sparsely populated outer districts of the region to the city center. Both systems are organized by SWE VAG, a transit company owned by the city administration. Trolley buses were in service in Airfort from 1948 until 1975, but are no longer in service. Airfort Weimar Airport lies west of the city center. It is linked to the central train station by a Stadtbahn, tram. 
It was significantly extended in the 1990s, with flights mostly to Mediterranean holiday destinations and to London during the peak Christmas market tourist season. Connections to longer haul flights are easily accessible via Frankfurt Airport, which can be reached in two hours via a direct train from Frankfurt Airport to Erfurt, and from Leipzig slash Halle Airport, which can be reached within half an hour. Biking is becoming increasingly popular since construction of high quality cycle tracks began in the 1990s. There are cycle lanes for general commuting within Airfort City. Long distance trails, such as the Jera Track and the Thuringian Cities Trail, connect points of tourist interest. The former runs along the Jera River Valley from the Thuringian Forest to the River Unstrut, the latter follows the medieval Via Regia from Eisenach to Altenburg via Gotha, Airfort, Weimar, and Jena. The Rennsteig Cycleway was opened in 2000. This designated high-grade hiking and bike trail runs along the ridge of the Thuringian Central Uplands. The bike trail, about long, occasionally departs from the course of the historic Rennsteig Hiking Trail, which dates back to the 1300s, to avoid steep inclines. It is therefore about longer than the hiking trail. The Rennsteig is connected to the E3 European Long Distance Path, which goes from the Atlantic coast of Spain to the Black Sea coast of Bulgaria and the E6 European Long Distance Path, running from Arctic Finland to Turkey. After reunification, the educational system was reorganized. The University of Erfurt, founded in 1379 and closed in 1816, was refounded in 1994 with a focus in social sciences, modern languages, humanities and teacher training. Today there are approximately 6,000 students working within four faculties the Max Weber Center for Advanced Cultural and Social Studies, and three academic research institutes. The university has an international reputation and participates in international student exchange programs. The Fach Hochschule Erfurt is a university of applied sciences, founded in 1991, which offers a combination of academic training and practical experience in subjects such as social work and social pedagogy, business studies, and engineering. There are nearly 5,000 students in six faculties, of which the Faculty of Landscaping and Horticulture has a national reputation. The International University of Applied Sciences Bad Honnef, Bonn, IUBH, is a privately run university with a focus on business and economics. It merged with the former Adam Rees Fach Hochschule in 2013. The world-renowned Bauhaus Design School was founded in 1919 in the city of Weimar, approximately from Erfurt. 12 minutes by train. The buildings are now part of a World Heritage Site and are today used by the Bauhaus Universität Weimar, which teaches design, arts, media, and technology related subjects. Furthermore, there are 8,6 state owned, one Catholic, and one Protestant. One of the state owned schools is a comma and elite boarding school for young Tolensian athletics, swimming, ice skating, or football. Another state owned school, offers a focus in sciences as an elite boarding school in addition to the common curriculum. The German national public television children's channel Kika is based in Erfurt. MDR, Middle Deutscher Rundfunk, a radio and television company, has a broadcast center and studios in Erfurt. The Turinga Allgemeine is a statewide newspaper that is headquartered in the city. The first freely elected mayor after German reunification was Manfred Ruge, CDU in office from 1990 to 2006, followed by Andreas Boswein, SPD, in office since 2006. The last municipal election was held in 2014 with the result Erfurt is twinned with. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.